The Ford Ranger Raptor has taken Australia by storm, but it has a meatier, more powerful and more exciting cousin. <laughs> And yes, it does jump. How good does this look? It is the Ford F-150 Raptor and this was the inspiration for the Ranger Raptor in Australia. It is mean as. It's got over 290 millimetres of ground clearance, so you can drive over anything. BF Goodridge KO2 tyres, Fox Racing suspension, and a giant twin turbo V6 under the bonnet there as well. This is certified big and one of the toughest utes on the American market. Starting price of 53,000 US dollars. I know, it is ridiculous. That is less than what we pay for a Ranger Raptor. But anyway, don't get me started on that. Let's have a closer look inside. You won't believe how much leg room there is in the back here. How good's this? There is so much leg room there. I could fit almost another row there and I've got this seat quite far back. Other creature comforts, you've got this center armrest, a couple of cup holders there to keep you busy. And check this out. You can fold these out of the way to give you extra room here and then under the seat I'm sitting on, you get secret storage as well, so you can't see it from the outside. Inflatable seat belts as well, so if someone does crash into you from the side, you are protected there too. And then a litany of USB plugs, AC, and also 12 volt. It is missing absolutely nothing. This is what I love about American trucks. It is huge, and there's so much storage in here. You've got a bin up the front there to put odds and ends, plus your USB connectivity. Cup holders, plus more cup holders. Giant center storage here as well. It's deep, you can just jam things into there. Top storage. Really is a very well fitted out cabin. Ford's also gone to town on technology and infotainment. So Sync 3, which is Ford's excellent infotainment system, has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's really easy to use as well. So that means nav and all the other critical functions of the car you can access super easy. Dual zone climate control, heated and cooled seats, those hot summer days. You get Raptor insignia on the seats. They hug you in nicely and it's a really comfy place to be seated. Now in terms of other tech that you get, the steering wheel is where everything happens. So you've got your volume controls, uh, radar cruise control, and then the rest of your drive mode selectors. So here you can switch between normal, sport, weather, sand, mud ruts, and Baja mode, which is the mode that loosens stability control, lets you have a bit of fun with the car. You can also keep tabs of what the car is doing up on the screen in front of the driver. There's a screen called Raptor Status. It'll tell you which four-wheel drive systems are active, which wheels are getting the torque, and how the four-wheel drive system is working. You can manually change modes here between two high, four high automatic, four high locked, and four low, plus the rear differential lock. So it is a fully featured four-wheel drive system. And if you don't like reversing trailers, no dramas, Ford as you covered with the trailer backup system. Just using this thing here, you can basically position the trailer exactly where you need it to be. You don't need to be an expert at parking as well. Killer sound system too. It really is the cabin of cabins when it comes to big trucks. The reason we keep talking about this being the right engine for the Ranger Raptor is because it is a beast of an engine. It's called the EcoBoost. It's a three and a half litre turbocharged V6. And how's this for some goods? 336 kilowatts of power and just under 700 newton meters of torque. Now, let's put that into terms that you'll understand. Zero to 60 miles an hour in 5.2 seconds, which is quicker than a Golf GTI. So I'm gonna sit it here, pop her into sport mode, load it up, hit the throttle. Oh, that noise is so good. Oh man, and there we go, 60 miles an hour. It is seriously quick, especially in a car this size. 10-speed automatic seems like a lot of gears, but this engine copes really well with it. You can lean on the throttle and instead of diving back through the gears, it'll just use the torque band of the engine to get the car moving. And it's always good because you don't want a 10-speed auto like this that has to shift through gears every single time you need to move. And the good thing is, as you take off, it'll sometimes pick second or another gear instead of having to move through all those gears. And then it'll skip through them as well. So it's a really intuitive gearbox. Then on top of that, you have these things here, the paddle shifters, 
metallic finish on them. They are seriously cool. So you just give that a pull back and that'll start letting you rip through the gears and you can see that counter on the side that'd tell you which gear you're in. Throttle response here is fantastic. You bury that foot, pins you back in the seat and away you go. It feels like a much smaller car and despite the fact it's quite a heavy truck, it doesn't really mind getting up and boogieing. It is a big truck and you know a truck is big when it barely fits on roads in America. It's wide and then it's got wide wing mirrors. But put that to one side because you've got parking sensors, a reversing camera and it kind of just blends in with the rest of the trucks on the road here. We work in Australia though, well that's probably another question altogether. So what about the ride? It is sensational. They've used Fox Racing shocks here as well, just like the Ranger Raptor. And just like the Ranger Raptor, we've found that it smooths out the ride beautifully. So when you're on these Californian freeways that have all these lumps and bumps, I mean, they wouldn't know a smooth road if it hit them in the face. This just cruises over them and you don't feel anything inside the cabin. And that's impressive when you consider the length and width of this car. It really should be bouncing around a lot more than it is. But it all begins to make even more sense when you head off road. This is where the Raptor really comes into its own. Heavily corrugated roads, you can barrel along these at whatever speed you like, and the suspension just soaks everything up. It feels like it's almost impossible to make this thing do anything silly. It is a crazy setup. When the going gets really tough, you're gonna to need to start having a play with some of these four-wheel drive controls. So currently, we're in two-wheel drive high. I'm gonna pop it over to four-wheel drive low, so turn that all the way around. It asks me to put it into neutral, so we'll shift that into neutral. Four-wheel drive shift in progress. And just for good measure, because it's a little scrabbly up the top there, I'm gonna enable that rear differential lock too. I've got a Torsen front diff, locking rear diff, and then an all-wheel drive system as well with low range. So if this can't get up there, I don't know what will. We're running BF Goodrich KO2 tires, so they're big and chunky. They will grip onto every bit of available traction there. We'll slot that into drive, rear diff lock on. We have everything set up. Now, straight away, I can change over to the rock and crawl mode, just because it is a little scrabbly up the top there, and it has automatically engaged the front camera. Now, that's important because this is a big car, and when you're looking over the front there, you can barely see what you're doing, and that will tell you what's up the top of the hill. So we'll snake our way up through here. Throttle response is really good here in low range, so straight away we're starting to lose a bit of traction here. <laughs> this is scrabbling, I'm getting close to the top. Oh, get stuck into that. There it is. Can't see anything over the bonnet there. That camera is fantastic. We'll make a turn at the top so we don't go off the other edge. Look at that piece of cake. I mean, that, that's a fairly serious hill and this car can do a lot more than this, but it goes to show you that if you are driving off-road and you encounter a nasty hill like that, all you do is just press a couple of buttons and away it goes. That is seriously impressive. One of the other features of the four-wheel drive system here as we go back down the other side of this uh, hill is the hill descent control. So one push of that while we're in low range, I let go of the brake and away it goes. We can vary that speed if we want to, but this is pretty good as a crawl down the hill here. Speed's manageable and it's just going down smoothly. Some of the, some of the not so good hill descent controls will just get too much speed or they'll run away from you. This feels completely in control and um, I could even just switch it off. I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward, but good to see that it is fitted with that kind of system as well. I have been blown away by this thing. The F-150 Raptor takes it to an all new level when it comes to performance trucks. Ford, pretty please, can we have the engine from this in the Ranger Raptor? That would totally transform it. And we want this in Australia right now as well. To read more about the Ford F-150 Raptor, head to caradvice.com. Let us know your thoughts. Should they sell this beast in Australia?